Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we're finishing up Jeremiah, Jeremiah 51 and 52. These are Jeremiah's prophecies. Some of these things aren't going to happen for 50 or 60 years. And we're hearing of the fall of Babylon. We've heard of it in days before, but this is the final days here. God speaks through Jeremiah to Babylon, to the king, to the people, and also to his own people in exile. Verse 1. I will stir up, stir up a destroyer against Babylon. Free from Babylon. Babylon, Save yourselves. Don't get trapped in her punishment. Talking to the people that are in exile now. The Lord has vindicated us. These are the people in exile speaking. Let us announce in Jerusalem everything the Lord has done. For the Lord has inspired the king of the Medes. All right, so the Medes, Medes and the Persians were coming together. The Medo-Persian Empire. And they were going to destroy Babylon. Verses 15 through 19 are a hymn of praise. Lord, the Lord made the earth by his power. He preserves it by his wisdom. It goes on to talk about idols and craftsmen that make them. In verse 19, but God is no idol. He's the creator of everything that exists, including his people, his own special possession. That's me and you. We're his special possession, greater than everything else he created. It switches gears going back to uh, Babylon's punishment. I am your enemy, says the Lord. Talking about Babylon. I will raise my fist against you. Raise the signal flags to the nations. It goes on to talk about different armies against Babylon. Uh, a multitude of horses coming in like swarming locusts. And the last part of 28. Led by the king of the Medes. Again, this is 60 years prior to this happening. And this is all written down for... Uh, and he's actually going to send a letter and a message to the king of Babylon and to the people of Babylon uh, in the next chapter. We'll see. Make Babylon suffer as she has made us suffer, says the people of Zion. That's the people of Jerusalem, the people that are in exile. And this is what God says to Jerusalem. Verse 36. I will be your lawyer. Plead your case. I will avenge you. And in 37, Babylon will be a heap of ruins, a place where no one lives. In 43, she's a dry wasteland where no one lives or even passes by. It transitions back to the exile people. Come out, my people, and flee Babylon. Just as Babylon killed the people of Israel and other nations through the world, I, so must her people be killed. In the last part of 56, for the Lord is God who gives a just punishment. He always repays in full. God used Babylon to destroy other evil nations. Now he's dealing with Babylon. And in speaking about um, Jeremiah sending a message to Babylon before even the destruction of Judah. This was the fourth year of the last king. Fourth year of King Zedekiah. That's how they kept time. kept dates. Fourth year of the King Zedekiah. And he, he made it to 11 years. He served 11 years. Uh, he told a guy to go and read it in Babylon. Then tie a stone to it and throw it in the Euphrates, or Euphrates River. Then say, uh, in the same way Babylon and her people will sink and never rise again because of the disasters I will bring upon her. And then in uh, chapter 52, Jeremiah 52, the last chapter, tells us of the last king of Judah's um, story. The last king here is King Zedekiah, who we've talked about. On the ninth day of the fourth month of the eleventh year of King Zedekiah's reign. That's how they kept dates. And this equates to July 18th, 586 BC. That's pretty cool. So in the ninth year, or the ninth day of the fourth month of the eleventh year of King Zedekiah's reign was July 8th, 586 BC. Okay, so the, on that day, a severe famine was taking place. They were surrounded by Babylonians. The section of the wall was broken in. Soldiers started to flee. Uh, King Zedekiah slipped out during the nightfall. He was found later on the plains of Jericho. They were, he was taken uh, to the king of Babylon. And he was made uh, to watch as they slaughtered his sons right, in, right there in front of him, including the officials of Judah. Then they gouged his eyes out. So that was the last thing he see was his, his son being uh, slaughtered. And then he was put in chains and led away to Babylon. On August 17th, again, this was uh, equated by someone's reign. Uh, a guy named, who was the captain of the guard of King Nebuchadnezzar, um, Nebuzaradan, he was the captain of the guard. What he did was he entered Jerusalem. He burned down the temple of the Lord, the royal palaces, all the houses. 
the important buildings and the walls. He allowed some of the poorest of the poor people to remain behind and work the gardens and the fields. He took all the gold, silver, and bronze and all the articles from the temple uh, to Babylon. A total of 4,600 captives in all were taken over a period of time. And it ends speaking about, this kind of switches gears in a weird direction, but it ends switching about Jehoiachin, which was the king right before King Zedekiah. Uh, and he only served three months, but it says in the 37th year of exile, so this is 37 years down the road into a 70-year exile, the king at the time, who was different from King Nebuchadnezzar, released King Jehoiachin from prison and allowed him to dine at his table. So we see God's mercy even to a an evil king of Judah. We see mercy. And Lord willing, tomorrow we're going to start Lamentations. It was also written by Jeremiah. It's more of a of a poetry type thing. He's longing for his people and hurting for his country. Um, God bless you. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. We'll see you tomorrow.